This week, there are new findings coming out of the American Heart Association meeting. Our nine health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, who is a cardiologist, she's here to talk about the biggest headlines in heart disease prevention and impact. We've talked about some drugs, Ozempic, diabetes, and use of these medications for weight loss. And I want to hear about some of the research. What have you guys learned about those? This was fascinating. It was standing room only. You had to pay the bouncer to get in because yeah. thousands of cardiologists huddled into this hall to hear about these drugs. Because as you said, we really sort of thought they were diabetes drugs. We studied them for diabetes. Then they started hitting for weight loss. Then we thought they're weight loss drugs. What this trial did was took 17,000 patients who were obese with heart disease. So heart disease patients gave them this drug. And what we found out was that the drug reduces their chance of dying from heart disease, having a heart attack or having a stroke by 20%. Reduces their chance of dying from anything by 19%. So now what we're learning is this is no longer just a diabetes or just a vanity or an obesity mm -hmm. drug. This is a heart disease drug. And the curve started to separate at about six weeks before they had even started to lose a lot of weight. So what this tells us is it's working through, of course, the weight loss, but also through inflammation, through insulin resistance, all these other mechanisms. Yeah, and I think even recent research came out showing that Ozempic helps with addiction issues. I mean, this really does, you don't like to use the word miracle drug, but it has so many different caveats to it now. Does that going to affect affordability in any way? Because I understand it's expensive. Yes, it's, I mean, the price tag is 900 to $1,800 a month. <laughs> and up until, yeah, up until now, even though the FDA has approved it for weight loss and obese patients, a lot of insurance companies were saying, well, we don't think obesity is a disease. Mm. We're not gonna pay for it. Now, it's, it's a cardiovascular drug. So we're not treating the obesity, we're treating the heart disease. And it's almost like your aspirin, your statin, all of those other drugs, they have to cover it. So I really hope that 2024, after this trial, is gonna make all those insurance companies pay attention and really put pressure on them to start to cover it so that we can get it into people, as you said, Alex, not just for weight loss and diabetes, but all the other effects. In March, they're gonna report a trial that it actually prevents progression of kidney disease wow. in patients that are heavy or have diabetes. As a cardiologist, I know you're also focused on people's cholesterol. And it sounds like there was some interesting news that came out of this as well on that front. Very fascinating here as well. So the way we've been treating cholesterol all these years is to take a pill every day, right? And we wait till you're 40, 50, or 60, kind of middle-aged, to start to be reactive once the cholesterol's already gotten stuck in the arteries. This is what's called a gene editing approach, which is taking people younger and earlier in life, actually turning off that gene that leads to high cholesterol. Because 75% of our cholesterol comes from our genetics only 25% comes from our diet. So if we turn off that gene early in your life, mm -hmm. that cholesterol never gets stuck. That cholesterol never turns into heart disease. And it's a one-time injection as opposed to taking a pill every day. Now, this was, of course, studied in patients who have a genetically high cholesterol, like I'm talking 300s, um, because it's still very experimental. Before it gets into our arms, will probably be five to seven, maybe 10 years, because they have to do a lot of testing on safety. But we just heard that in sickle cell anemia and beta thalassemia, which are also genetic disorders, this gene editing technology just got FDA approved in Europe. So it's coming closer than we think in terms of changing our genetics to prevent disease rather than reacting to it later in life. That is incredible. I know you've been excited about being able to give this drug to some of your patients, and you've talked about some of the success your patients have had. So, you know, this just increases that tenfold, I would imagine, with this new results and research. Very much, and I'm so excited about the future of cardiology after this, because we know that this has been our biggest enemy for decades, in the US, all abroad, and what we're now looking at is it's not just the cholesterol, it's getting it down early, getting it down quickly and keeping it down, but it's also inflammation. It's also clotting risk. And I tell a lot of my patients, when that cholesterol gets stuck in the arteries, it's like an egg in the wall of your blood vessel. So what happens when an egg pops open, a raw egg? it makes a mess. That's how you have a heart attack. That cholesterol spills into the arteries unexpectedly and then you're rushed off to the hospital. If we could hard boil that egg, which is what these drugs are doing, mm. it's gonna be <laughs> socked in there. You're gonna die with the plaque, not from it, and it's gonna change the course of your disease. It's life changing. Wow. Exactly. The egg, egg analogy, that's <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Coley.